Hello, everyone. Welcome to another segment of UNC Talks. Today, we're going to talk about applying to UNC, and we have lots of representatives from um, admissions today. Um, do you guys want to go ahead and introduce yourselves? We'll just go down the line. You can start. Sure. My name is Breland Bovey, and I'm a junior here going to school at UNC. I'm double majoring in journalism and communication studies, and I'm also a photographer on campus. Very nice. I'm Darius Partner. I'm an admissions counselor here uh, on campus uh, for first year students. My territory includes uh, the Western Slope as well as uh, the, the Northern Front Range of Colorado and Southern California. And I'm Diana Kiker. I'm a transfer admission counselor and I have all of the Western undergraduate exchange states as well as our local community college, Ames and Morgan Community College and Northeastern Junior College as well as Pikes Peak Community College. Awesome. All right, so um, Diana has to get out a little early, but she's uh, representing transfer, so we want to get a couple of questions answered by her real quick. We're just going to go over some frequently asked questions, and um, if you guys have any other ones that you want specifics to, um, just go ahead and um, do it in the comment section of the uh, Hangout. Um, but yeah, we'll go ahead and start with some frequently asked um, transfer questions. So we can start off with one we got from a student. Um, are we allowed to transfer into other majors? If so, are these are there particular majors harder to get into than um, others? Well, some of our majors do have additional admission requirements. For example, business requires 15 credits and a 3.0. If you don't have that, when you first transfer to UNC, you'll just be pre-business, and then your first semester here at UNC, just take 15 credits and receive a 3.0, and you'll be in the Montfort College of Business. Yeah, you can you can certainly pick a different major once you get here. Some of our majors don't have any electives, such as elementary education. It's a very narrowly defined curriculum. Nursing is another major here that has a pretty narrowly defined curriculum. But certainly psychology, sociology, communication studies, they have a lot of electives, so they're pretty easy to transfer into, and you could talk to Breland about communication <laughs> studies. All right, perfect. Um, let's do another one for you. Um, why don't you just go ahead and tell us a little bit about what makes a person qualify as a transfer student. Okay, so I know a lot of high school students right now are doing what we call concurrent coursework while they're in high school. It's really popular. Some even receiving their Associate of Arts degree or Associate of Science degree, which gives them really a head start on coming to college. So those students are not considered transfer students because the key to being a transfer student is taking college coursework after you've graduated from high school. So anything that you're doing while you're still in high school, you still apply to UNC as a first year student and, and send transcripts from all that coursework that you've taken while you are a high school student. Because certainly if it's college level and you've received a grade of a C minus or higher, it's gonna to transfer to UNC and you can apply it to your future bachelor's degree. Thank you, all right, perfect. And then uh, one more, or two more transfer spe specific ones. Um, how will we know which credits are transferable? All right, so once you get admitted to UNC, then our registrar's office determines how coursework transfers. And just something to throw out there, there is all of the community colleges in Colorado have the same course numbering system. So, for example, if you took English 121 at a community college in Colorado, it does transfer to UNC as English 122, and there is a transfer. So you can just look at that, because like I said, all the community colleges have the same course numbering system, which makes it really easy to see how those courses will transfer without you know, applying and being admitted. However, if you're from out of state, like I said, you will have to apply and then the office of the registrar will determine how that coursework transfers. Basically, if it's a college level course and you've passed it with a C minus or higher, most definitely it's gonna to apply to something here at UNC. Perfect, All right, and then we got one more transfer specific question, uh, or not specific transfer exactly, but um, who qualifies for Western Undergraduate Exchange? All right, so Western Undergraduate Exchange, there are 15 states, including Colorado, and it's automatic. So when you're doing your application, you know, if you put down your permanent address, are you from California, then you're automatically going to pay the Western undergraduate rate for tuition. So it's not specific to majors, it's it's automatic. It's for all majors and everybody who's from one of the 15 Western undergraduate exchange states. Perfect. All right, is there um, anything else about anything transfer related that you maybe want to mention or 
Um, does that kind of wrap it up for that? We also have some scholarships for our transfer student population. We have two of them that are admission-based transfer scholarships. So there's the trustee transfer scholarship or the presidential transfer scholarship. And to receive the trustee transfer scholarship, you just need 13 transferable credits with a 3.5 or higher. And that's valued at $2,000 a year. And it's renewable. And to keep getting it every single semester that you're a student here, you just need to be a full-time student, which is 12 <coughs> credits, and keep a minimum 2.0 GPA. So you would get $1,000 each semester, both fall and spring. Whereas the Presidential Transfer Scholarship has a little bit less GPA requirements at 3.0. So a 3.0 with 13 credits, and that's valued at $1,000 a year. So you get $500 a semester, and it's also renewable. Perfect. All right, and if anyone um, later uh, has any transfer specific questions, um, Dan and I won't be here, but um, either we know a little bit more about that or we can also uh, connect to you later and uh, answer um, through social media in a little bit as well. Um, so cool, now we've got a couple more. Um, why don't we start with a freshman admission council question. Um, what would you say a really good um, or an acceptable SAT and ACT score would be for UNC? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so what I've been telling my students is uh, on the middle 50% the majority of our freshman incoming freshman class last year had that uh, 21 to a 25 um, on the ACT as well as a, uh, a 970 to 1170 on the SAT. Um, however, if you're a little below that, that's totally cool. We definitely accept those students um, as well. And if you're a little above that, we pay handsomely for, for scholarships that are admissions based. Awesome. And you don't need both SAT and ACT, right? Just need one or the other? Correct. Awesome. Correct. Perfect. Um, all right, cool. So let's go to one to be Lynn. Um, did you mention your outdoor outreach coordinator? You... Oh, I'm outreach coordinator. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, sorry, uh, let's see. So are essays or letter recommendations required? And if they aren't, can I still send them if I feel like they'll help me? Sure. Um, essays and letters of recommendation are not required for application for UNC. Um, but you do have the option of sending us those if you'd like to. So if maybe your ACT score is a little shaky or you're, you haven't had a really good certain semester during high school and you kind of want to let us know, you can write a little um, statement letter to us just kind of telling us who you are as a person rather than us just looking at your numbers. Um, and of course, we always like letters of recommendation. It just puts you higher up in our mind, of course, but we don't require them. So the majority of our students won't send those, but you're welcome to. And they're not required. Do you know specifically where they would send that, or um, is that? You know, I know that there's a section on the application. Um, you can put a personal statement if you'd like, and it is optional. Um, sending in letters of recommendation, I would suggest sending that, mailing that to our admissions office. Perfect. Thank you. You can find that on our website as well. Um, the address for that. Um, let's do another one um, for uh, Darius. Um, how would you say is the best way to go about applying for scholarships? Definitely. Uh, kind of us. Uh, are where our main scholarships lie uh, for incoming freshmen or first year students um, is our admittance based and merit based scholarships. These are scholarships um, that you get uh, based off of merit. You don't have to do anything for them when you uh, apply with us uh, based on your ACT scores and GPA. Um, you qualify and become eligible. Um, they start with the Pro Bowl scholarship all the way up to the Trustee scholarship, um, starting with a 3.4 and a 24 in the ACT or a 1080. Um, on the SAT, starting from there, kind of moving up, we give anywhere from $8,000 to, to $24,000 for scholarships. Um, but also, we um, also super score um, for scholarship purposes only, um, which is pretty cool. And what that is basically is that we take the best um, scores. So if you take the ACT or SAT multiple times, we take the best scores from, from each category and combine it for one composite score. Awesome. Yeah. Also, different. Um, different colleges as well as organizations um, on campus also give scholarships. Perfect, thank you. Of course. Um, actually, I did have another transfer like question mm -hmm. I'll waste here. How different is the um, transfer application versus the just um, first year student mm -hmm. application? It's not a lot different. So the application fee is, it's the same as $45. And there is a NACAC waiver form for transfer students. And it only has two criteria though. Either you're, if you're a TRIO student, at a community college, you can select that and have your application fee waived. Also, if you're a Pell Grant recipient, so those are the two ways to get it waived coming in as a transfer student, doing the NACAC 
transfer waiver form. So you'd want to fill that out and have, you know, someone from financial aid sign off that you're receiving a Pell Grant or your TRIO advisor can sign off that you're in the TRIO program at your community college. And other than that, it's, it's pretty similar. You have to list all colleges that you've been to. So I guess that's a little different. And we do need official transcripts from each college that, that you've ever attended sent to us. So they would be sent on behalf of the registrar's office would send them directly to us because they do need to be official. Perfect. All right, thank you. Um, let's ask another one for you. Um, how long will it take after they apply um, to find out whether they are accepted or denied? Okay. Generally, it's going to take one to two weeks for us to get back to you on whether or not you're accepted. There are certain times of the year that are a little bit more busy where a lot of people are applying at once, and that might be two to three weeks. So in general, one to three, but we usually tell students that two-week mark is when you should start waiting for something in the mail. All right. Thank you. Let's see. I think we got a couple questions. Um, we got one. What transcript should I send as a transfer student? You should send an official transcript from each college that you've attended, and we will also need your high school transcript if you're transferring less than 30 credits. Awesome. And there's another one for transfer. Um, I think it's a, you may have answered this. Um, yeah. What are scholarships available for transfer students? You right, that, right. right. We have two, two admission base, either the, the trustee transfer scholarship, which is valued at $2,000 a year with a 3.5 and 13 credits, or the presidential transfer scholarship, which is 13 credits and a 3.0 GPA. Awesome. Perfect. All right. Um, let's go another one for Darius. Um, can, I change, um, can I change my ACT score if it changes after I've submitted my application? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you can send uh, your ACT or SAT scores um, if you have them uh, all throughout your freshman year. Um, and that definitely helps um, in regards to super scoring, like mm -hmm. I touched on earlier for scholarship purposes, but definitely. And I believe the ACT um, actually allows you to send up to three for free. I mean, time after that, you have to have to pay a fee um, or whatever. We definitely accept those. Mm -hmm. All right, perfect. My roommate took it three times just so she could get one score higher, and she got an entire larger scholarship, like the one right above that. Mm -hmm. It's definitely worth it. It's way worth sure, it, absolutely. Yeah. Um, Let's see, um, let's do another one. Uh, are there any programs that require additional or different applications? I touched on that a little bit, but do you want to add anything to that? Or? Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, so we have our kind of our standard of admissions process, um, but I know uh, Diana was kind of talking about entry into the business school, mm -hmm. um, having that certain index score, um, if you will. Also, the visual and performing arts um, also require separate um, kind of application once you get in um, mm -hmm. to the school. Uh, as well. Um, our nursing is kind of in your sophomore year, mm -hmm. uh, second semester to apply for that. Um, but that's kind of after you get in and pass our general um, admissions process. Yeah, so like for example, nursing, you, that you would declare pre-nursing and then go into nursing. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then as far as the portfolio, you mentioned that a little bit for um, um, art and design. Mm -hmm. How does that work now? I know mm -hmm. it just changed a little bit. It has. It has. I mean, it kind of depends on the, the uh, specific emphasis that you have. Um, it's different emphases um, require different um, portfolios, but the kind of the, the broad idea, general idea behind it is that you are um, required in order to get into the program to, to send um, that specific um, portfolio. Um, mm -hmm. Did you have anything to add to that as far as art and design? Right. I think, I think um, the portfolio comes in handy for scholarship purposes. Mm -hmm. To showcase your talent and skills. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So as um, I'm art designer, and I've um, definitely got a couple really nice scholarships just because of the portfolio. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know remember exactly now. I think they um, did the application later, kind of like almost nursing. But, mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it was trying to change a little bit since I did it. But um, all right, let's do another one for B. Lynn. Um, can I change my major to something else other than what I put on my application? So it kind of goes along the same theme. But absolutely. I know someone who's changed their major five times. I added a major and changed the direction of one of mine. Um, students change their majors all the time, even in the middle of their junior year. So you can do that right when you get here as a freshman if you'd like. Um, you just talk to the registrars. You talk to um, mostly the program that you're wanting to go into, and then you have to make sure that you take that major off of your name in your file. Um, it's really easy to do. You just got to ask someone how to do it, but you can definitely do that. Absolutely. Perfect. And you don't have to like reapply or anything. So no, no reapplying. If you accidentally put chemistry, but you really want to be a journalism major, it's 
That's all right, especially because some of those other certain majors, you have to do a separate separate application anyway, so mm -hmm. it's not like you're going to have to be forced into that major. Right. And yeah, it's actually a really common thing to switch majors. Like, um, she's out of one. I came from painting art history at one point, so there's lots of different things you can do. Um, let's see. Um, this one might be good for uh, you as well. How and when do I apply for housing? And is it on the application that they do the profile, or is it okay. different? Um, our housing application actually opens starting December 1st of this year, and it's um, it kind of goes along with our rolling admissions. It kind of just keeps on being open. Um, but you can you log into a different website. It won't be on your MyUNC profile, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's in our, just on our housing website, and there's a big old button that you can find right there, and it's really easy to find, but you just um, put in all your information. Uh, we do require a $200 housing deposit. That kind of saves your spot for when you get to actually pick your room and your roommates and everything. Um, but starting December 1st, you can just go on in and fill it out. Perfect. All right, so um, another one over here. Uh, if I don't get accepted, what can I do to improve my chances for the following year if, they're, if you're really sad in UNC but you didn't get this first year? Um, what do you guys say would be a good one for that? So unfortunately, if we're not able to admit you as a high school student, I would encourage you to attend a community college and stay there probably until you earn 30 credits because a strong candidate for admission to UNC as a transfer student is someone who has a minimum 2.4 GPA and 30 college credits. So maybe a year at a community college and then definitely apply to UNC. And that'll save you money too, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know some people have intentionally, they got accepted to UNC, but they actually took in a couple of credits um, that they, yep. more general ones. That My brother, he just graduated this May and he got accepted to UNC, but he decided to go to Ames Community College first, save some money, get a lot of credits out of the way. He did all of his gen eds, um, and then he'll head on over here, so. Absolutely. All right, um, let's see, how about, um, are there any programs that require this now, actually? Yeah, we kind of took this, talked about this one already, so let's skip that one. Um, Ah, here's one. There's a $45 fee for um, applying to UNC, um, but there's a possibility to get that waived. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about how they could go about doing that and how they would qualify? Sure. Um, so people who qualify for the fee waiver on the $45 application fee generally meet the same qualifications as someone in high school who qualifies for free or reduced lunch. Um, a lot of those are pretty much the same, um, but the way that you fill out the weight, the, yeah, the piece of paper for the waiver. Um, it's actually available on your My UNC profile when you're filling out the application. Um, if for some reason it doesn't pop up or you're not really finding it, it's called the NACAC, N-A-C-A-C, -A -A it's a big acronym. Um, you can literally just Google it, find it. You need to fill that out, um, get someone at your high school, most likely a counselor to sign that. They'll bring that over to UNC and we'll fill it out and say, yep, you're absolutely okay to do that and then we'll give you a special code to make sure that you can punch that in and you can submit your application without paying that $45. We're gonna do a little quick run through uh, using screen share, showing you just the general application process and at the end of it, it is a nice little section that we, um, we should emphasize at that point. Um, all right, I think we just got one more. Um, when does the well, when does the application close for 2016 and um, would it hurt their chances if they ended up um, doing it like right at the end of the deadline. Yeah. Um, so as far as, as closing we are, um, rolling, uh, rolling admission spaces. Um, I always personally uh, tell students to apply around Christmas time, um, the end of the first semester of their of their senior, just because that sets you up well um, for the housing application that opens December first as well um, as the financial aid like the FAFSA. On um, the priority date for that is March first. Um, but we, it's definitely cool to kind of apply after that. Um, I know I personally made a, a later decision in, in April um, to figure out where I was going the following fall. Um, so there's not, I wouldn't say a, a solid deadline. Um, I probably wouldn't recommend maybe applying like mid-August <laughs> or late or uh, early August. That'd be a little, yeah. a little tougher, especially <laughs> if you consider living on campus and, and all that. Um, but as far as just like a ideal, um, an ideal day, I'd probably say. Um, around Christmas time would be, would be great. Or you're always like the semester ahead. Mm -hmm. Makes things go a lot smoother. Yeah, for sure. Um, and so um, as far as rolling admission, um, how does that work if they, they, uh, they applied maybe like in the 
day before classes start or something like would they just accept for another semester how does that work exactly the day before the semester starts yeah, well, say that happens. we still have we, we do want we do have some transfer students that do that it's a late it's a last minute decision you just have to hustle up and get with an advisor and get your pin number and there might not be a lot of choices as far as course times you might be in classes at 8 a.m but yeah. It's still doable because I think the last day to add a class is what the five o'clock like the tenth. First day off is right. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's definitely helpful to do, do it a little early. You know, mm -hmm. as much time you have, the better. So, uh, and then of course you get better paid mm -hmm. with like housing, mm -hmm. all that kind of right. dining, all that kind of stuff. So, um, but yeah, it looks like we are um, done with our questions that we have prepared for FAQs and other ones that we've got answered so far. Um, is there anything you guys want to mention? Anything that comes to mind, maybe something you hear a lot. Or I know a lot of times students are, are asking after they submit their items, well, you know, how long does it take? Um, and sometimes things can be a little more delayed um, because things kind of get lost in translation as far as transcripts mm -hmm. or anything in that, that aspect. But I would always say um, the best way to kind of send everything together, um, if you can at once, I mean, send it electronically. I know sometimes, um, you know, mail may be the, the, the easy, like the best way for you. Um, but electronically definitely helps things kind of speed up the process, um, if you will. I mean, if you ever want to send letters of rec or personal statements or anything like that, you can send that to specific counselors. Um, we're all aware we are told to kind of forward that on to uh, the processing, um, as well as admit the admissions um, dot help. The admissions uh, at, at unco.edu. Mm -hmm. um, you could definitely send uh, those as well. We have people. Um, I'm online there willing to assist and, and help in anything, but electronics, electronically, excuse me, is the way to go. Awesome. Do you have any transfer specific questions you get a lot to me here? Well, there's, like Darius just said, there's official, you know, electronic transcripts get to us a lot faster. And a lot of colleges have that software capability anymore versus putting your transcript in the mail. So if your school does that, be sure and ask if they can send official electronic. And if they can, it's just unc.transcripts with the S on the end there because it won't get to us without the S. So unc.transcripts at unco.edu. And you'll get here a lot faster than in the mail, which, means, also, you, which yeah. means you get admitted faster. Which we just decided is very beneficial. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. We also take um, test scores on the transcript as well. Which is really nice. Right. Mm -hmm. If your ACT or SCT scores are on your high school transcript, mm -hmm. correct, mm -hmm. they will be how to work just fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I guess I thought one as well. Um, I guess maybe if they don't know exactly where to find their official transcript, do they? How do they go about getting that? Anyone want to explain? So for college, if you're a transfer student, it's definitely always the registrar's office, records office. That's the keeper of any academic records. So you just need to get in touch with them. And a lot of schools. Colleges, universities have online forms that, that you can fill out. Should some yes, ones? some might charge you a fee to have your transcript sent. That varies by the institution what the the rate is to have your transcript sent. But that's where you start. That's where you can find it, and it is the student's responsibility to get it sent to us. And I know for mm -hmm. high school students, when they're wondering how to send their mm -hmm. high school transcripts to us, I usually tell them, start with your high school counselor, because mm -hmm. they're assigned to you and all of your files, and they can usually, they know exactly how to send them over to UNC, and we usually do it electronically. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of the times it will have your ACT or SAT score on those. Just maybe double check with them. Um, if that's not working out, then um, you can also request from that office to have an official copy, but you need to have an official one, not just a copy. Yeah, and um, Breland's the one, uh, she deals with a lot of um, calling to and um, getting, receiving calls from students, um, so you probably get a lot of um, questions you get pretty frequently. Do you think of anything that just comes to mind? Um, I know this isn't doesn't have a lot to do with applying per se, but I know you're saying make sure you apply around Christmas time, that's a good date to remember. Another good date to remember for the FAFSA for your financial aid is Valentine's Day, so just kind of wanted to throw that out there, it's mm -hmm. a good date to try and remember. Um, but most of the time, students just have no idea how to send in their high school transcripts. So start with your high school counselor. Yeah, I've always heard a lot of, um, especially at the VA, always telling people um, Thanksgiving is a really nice time to apply for um, for college. So yeah. um, it's just, you know, some downtime you have away from school and uh, just kind of a more relaxing time. And that's a really good time frame as well. You're not, you know, waiting too long or anything. Um, yeah. 
Now, there's not any benefit of doing it too early. Is there's no reason that would be bad. Either. There's no such thing yeah. as too early. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Middle school, no. maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, all right. So um, we can probably go ahead to do the um, walkthrough of the application. Um, that might trigger some other questions if you guys have any. So we can go ahead and set that up now. That's not right. <laughs> <laughs> We're just going to walk through the process of applying to UNC. It's a nice, easy process of the profile now. You're going to go to unco.edu, which will take you to this home page. And there's a nice little clear area here that says, Fall 2016 applications now open. So like apply for that. I'll take you to this page, which you can also access by going to apply.unco.edu. Um, this is where you can either log in, or in this case, we will create a new profile. This is a really nice way to um, simplify our process. But um, here you can select either undergraduate or graduate students. We are going to select undergraduate for this one. And then here is where you just insert um, all of your basic information. It's a nice solid base for you know, whatever else you have to you know, process for uh, this um, profile for, such as um, you know, the application itself or scholarships. So just enter all your information here. Nothing too tricky. It's all pretty straightforward. Of course, I'm going to do some fake information for this. In this case, All right, now for uh, this section, you're going to say which term you want to apply for. So we'll say fall 2016. Um, and then you'll select your uh, area of interest. So say how much education will be down here. Um, for me, I'll select art and design with emphasis in art history because that's one of my degrees right now. So like Greeley, most of them will say just Greeley. I will ask if you uh, attended college after high school. Um, here's where you select your high school. Now this is um, kind of a nice simple process. You'll select the, um, the country, then the state, and then I'll type in the city my school's in. So I'll say Lafayette, search, and I'll show you the schools there. And I went to peak to peak. There you go, and I'll say select. So nice and simple. Uh, if your school's not listed, type in this box, or you can also check this box for um, homeschooling. This is where you'll select your graduation date when you expect to graduate high school. I'll say when my college graduation is. Um, this is where you'll select the password. And we give you criteria to make sure it's a nice, solid password. Um, it needs to be at least eight characters. It has to include at least one uppercase and one lowercase. And then we're going to also have you include one number. And that's a nice, secure password if you follow that um, criteria. And make sure it's something you remember. You may even want to you know, have it written down somewhere. This is where you select the password question and answer. So we'll ask this question to you. You would answer it if you would like um, to help recover your password. I'm just going to type in some silly question and answer right here. Just I see what I'm going to make it a little bit better than that, but 
Um, once you have all this, uh, you will check this um, box right up here to say whether or not you're logged in from public computer or not. So I'll say create my UNC profile. And then here we have it. We have our basic my UNC profile set up. Um, and then again, you can um, use this profile to do a number of things. Uh, what we're talking about today is um, apply to UNC. So start an application right here. So then it has a suggested application for us, the undergraduate, application fee of $45, uh, your citizen, um, and first year transfer or second bachelor. So I will say yes to this one. <clears throat> and you can see right here, you've had uh, a lot of the information that you've already inputted is already um, inside this application. So it's kind of nice. You don't have to continue to um, type in the same stuff over and over again. Um, so you can see here, it's been a really nice, um, the profile has really made it much nicer to apply. You'll just fill in any sort of supplementary things that we have not already collected from you, such as social social security number, sorry. Um, I'm just gonna put in some zeros here, but um, obviously you're gonna put in your real one. Um, select your status as citizen or not. Um, Ethnicity, uh, you'll just select uh, whatever you identify with here. I'm not Hispanic, um, and I am white, so I'll put that there. Um, date of birth, I already have that for me. Um, you also might want to check on this to make sure it's uh, accurate, just in case you type something in wrong. Um, and for something like this, for example, like military affiliation, if you're not sure, if you should just like yes or no, you can always call um, UNC uh, Office of Admissions, and we can get any of these questions answered for you and help clarify anything. So for these ones, just read over these uh, questions right here. Make sure um, you can say yes to all of them. And if you can, uh, put a yes there. And then you're going to say save and continue. Now, uh, we've already selected what we want to major in. Um, you can say yes for financial aid. That's just basically saying you want free money, and who doesn't? <laughs> Said continue. Um, you'll say here whether your parents earned a four year degree or not, or if just one of them did, my father did. And so um, just that'll help us with uh, things like scholarship applications and just understanding your demographics. Um, let's see. I'll then put my mother here, so say parent. Let's say Mama UNCO. Since most of you are probably, um, if you're in high school, living at home, say yes to um, Sam Andrews, say continue. This is where you select what kind of student you are. So you'll say, First year student, transfer, or a second bachelor student. Um, and for most of you, you'll probably say first year. Some of you might say transfer. Um, in this case, we'll say first year student. Let's see, it's already gotten our high school from this. Perfect. Um, let's see if I can remember when I started, just for the sake of consistency. Um, pretty sure it was September. Uh, the year. I think it's 2007, maybe. Yes, yeah, 2007. Uh, the month, that one was May 2011. Did you finish high school for some class against? Yes. Um, the day we already did that. And this is just going to go over um, your uh, classes in high school. So I'll just check whether or not you have completed um, X amount of years for a certain topic. For me, I did do all of these in high school, so I'll say yes.
I'm just ask you for your GPA, high school. So this is where it consolidates um, whether you took, you took the ACT or SAT, or in this case, I took both. Let's see if I can remember one of my scores for this one. Was that one? SAT. I never remember I like, got my SAT. I don't know what that one is. You can check no in this, but um, especially that you can select both if you want. And I've got 25 here. I think it was 1500 in this one, if I'm not mistaken. Um, all right, so I'm um, on GD and then that, so I'll say seven or ten you. Here's crime, you can put it here, you put yes or no, save a suspension. Um, and then if you did get something there, it's not an automatic um, turn down. We're just going to um, you know, have you explain it right here. Um, maybe there was a situation, or also if you want to talk about maybe why you have a low GPA or whatever it is. Um, tell us about it here, and um, we will read that over. So, um, we understand there's some situations that look bad in numbers, um, but you know, may not be what we think. But anyway, so this is where you'll just read over. I'm certifying that you understand the following. Um, make sure you read it over. Um, and you shouldn't really have a problem with any of them. Just it's a good habit to always read them over. Um, yes, yes, yes. So we'll say. Yes, all those. Now this is where you put in your signature electronically. Just put in your full name, um, the date has it first already, and then um, you can say pay now um, with a code or um, uh, request an application waiver. So let's say we want to do that. Um, this is the information that will let you know whether or not you can do that or not, and how you can do it, how you can apply for it. Um, so just read over this stuff. Um, you could say submit here or save. Um, and then that's basically how you apply. You can also select paint that, but um, that is the basic application. All right, perfect. So um, so um, that could have, you know, may have triggered some other uh, questions or anything. I know I'm um, relaying the idea of something you want to say from that. Um, what do you want to address that? Um, towards the bottom of one of those last screens, you skipped over GED. You said, no, mm -hmm. I'm not going to get my GED. I've had, um, I have conversations with students um, who are mostly high school seniors getting ready to apply to colleges over the phone, and um, we see requirements pop up that we need from them. We need their GED scores and everything, and they say, I don't know what that is, but on their application, they must have clicked yes, I'm getting my GED, because I think some people um, consider that their high school diploma. I just want to make sure that you guys know that they're different. High school diploma means you're graduating on the day that you're supposed to. You're going to walk and get that diploma. GED means you're going to take different means to get that general education degree. So if you're graduating from your high school, do not click yes for GED, because it changes your application a little bit, and we'll call you and say we need something from you, and you won't know what that is. <laughs> Yeah, it's basically, well, I think the EN that is equivalent, so I don't okay. know, yeah, it's the equivalent. It's not um, the actual thing. Mm -hmm. Or, yeah, something like that. Something like that. I don't know, but um, let's see. I also thought of something I didn't really address. Um, I know some people have asked me before, like, um, you know, why do you need um, things like gender, ethnicity, all that kind of stuff, um, you know, first year um, students. Uh, do you want to answer maybe why we have that on our application? Yeah, um, I know some of it is just for our, our own um, personal data, just because we like to know um, what's on campus. Um, but also, we have different communities um, on campus to help, like you said, first first mm -hmm. generation students. And we have what we call the Center of Human Enrichment. Um, it's almost a cohort, if you will, of students that are all coming from generally the kind of the same background. They're the first uh, students to go um, and, and pursue a college degree, and we have uh, we have over thirty six percent on our campus. Uh, which is kind of a large number um, um, at, at a university in general. Um, so we definitely like to know um, who you are uh, and where you come from just so we can best accommodate you, just because I really believe that UNC uh, in general is just a very welcoming campus. We want all of our students um, to feel uh, like they're at home because this is essentially their home away from home. Yeah, absolutely. So basically, it's not, uh, if you answer anything, that's not going to 
harm you in any way, just right. like for records or for even for good things like scholarships or just like, you know, communities and such. So um, don't be nervous about it, stuff like that. Um, did you think of anything while you were watching that or um, like anything that came to mind? Um, no, I've, I've, I've actually talked to numerous, uh, a number of students um, about our application and, and they really just said it's really user friendly. Um, it doesn't take long. And we kind of hit it on the head is filling out that profile first, um, which is, which is very helpful moving forward because we're not on the common app. I mean, we have our own kind of a way of going about applying to our institution, but then again, it's, doesn't take long. You know, there's not really essays or anything like that or letters of record unless you feel the need to, uh, to express yourself in, in that manner, but it's I definitely like how how set up it is. Yeah, it's, and then there's gonna be other um, I don't know exactly what they might use to apply for, but I know there's other situations in which the uh, UNC profile will help because of saving from spilling out all that information again later. But um, yeah, perfect. It looks like um, we don't have any more you know questions. Um, we go with our FAQ, and um, we've kind of set our last thoughts. Um, I guess we can end a little bit early on this one. So thank you again. And if you are actually wondering about um, maybe some more like housing or dining applications, um, yeah, or financial, anything like that, um, where those are all in other segments that um, you can see the past ones. Or for example, I know our next one's going to be on the housing or yeah, housing application. I believe is what we're doing next. Um, and then if any other questions, general, just you know, let us know. You know, call really or any of us or. Admissions counselor. We'll call some of you tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you are doing outreach. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> well, perfect. Thank you all for coming and um, join us for next um, UNC Talks. Go Bears. <laughs> Go Bears. <laughs>